Hey there, sorry you had to wait so long for a video today. Uh, today is Sunday as of this recording and um, it was kind of a long day. Uh, my son, Rock, as sweet as he is, he wanted to make some backpacks um, because he has a real heart for um, homeless people when he sees them. So we've been constructing these backpacks um, all day uh, with a bunch of stuff that might be uh, be useful to someone who's uh, experiencing the cold with that house. Um, so we were doing that a lot today, and so that's why it is night. It's super dark in this room, um, but I did want to get you a video. And um, yeah, so today I'm going to do something uh, a little bit different. This is kind of just like a maintenance tweak um, in the course of the regular videos, introducing one concept each day. Um, this didn't really fit, um, but I thought since we have a day that's just video, I thought I could um, do it. It's really just like a refactor um, that I I like and I would definitely do um, in in my own code base. So here we go. So first things first, it's day 16 now. I have forked this. You can get that at that code sandbox. Um, and then the work that we're going to be doing today is in our Pokemon JS file. Now, what I want is um, we refactored to this where we were taking the ID and we we're putting it into the resource. Um, now that's fine. This is a, a, a perfectly fine place for this. Um, I'm sorry, we're not putting in the resource. Uh, we're just every time we call this function with render, um, we are um, making making uh, sending this to it, right? Uh, and it's fine, but it's not ideal. Ideally, I'd like to have it in the resource. And um, that's what we're going to do today. We're going to put this um, this in the resource. Um, so when we fetch the API, when we store it in cache, it's going to get stored with all those da that data on it. Basically going to normalize it for how we need the app to know about it. Um, and um, yeah, so I'm going to go through that uh, refactor. And it's a you know, fairly, fairly simple. Um, but it does kind of require a couple steps and some syntax that you may not be use used to. Um, so first of all, let's see, okay, the app's working, which is because I added that dot there. So what we're going to do is once this fetch resolves and we call dot JSON on the response, I, I want to do another step. So I'm going to chain another then onto it. Now this should work for a while. So I'm just going to kind of go step by step. Um, now, anytime we give it a then, we're basically going to give it a function. So there's going to be it's going to take some arguments or no arguments, and then it's going to respond with some block body, right? And typically, you're going to have to return something. So in this case, we would take the result. Um, I'll do this long case. Um, we take the result of the 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 previous block, um, and we would take that and do some type of transformation on it. Um, in this case, we're just doing return result. Now. Um, because of this arrow function, we can actually avoid this return. We just have to remove the block. So we can take that out. Now we are taking the result from the previous block and we are returning that. So as you can see, the apps all still works, um, which means that this is not in introducing a breakage. This is the same thing that we had before, not returning anything. So what we can do um, now we know that the shape of this return is an object, right? So we'd like to be able to spread out. If we wanted to make some transformations, we can just spread out the results of that on a new object. There is a caveat. If we want to take advantage of that implicit return, we're going to have to wrap this in an additional set of parens. Now, the reason that is, is because it sees this here and it thinks that it is a block and then it's expecting the return. So you can kind of see the, the problem that we get into. However, if we wrap in these parens, then it will it, it all works just like magic. So just remember, if you're trying to automatically return a an object uh, like an object literal, um, just wrap it in parens, it'll work. Um, you can also instead do um, what is it? Put it in another block and say return like that. So then the, this outside one is the block. And then this is the ooh, if I can get it, this is the object that you're returning. Um, however, you don't need to. So I tend to just do it like this. Um, so there we go. That works. Now, what we want to do is we want to we want to return a result, right? 
But inside here, we can see that there is a um, there's a, a property called results, and that's the actual array filled with the data. That's the one that we're mapping on. So we need to return a new results. Um, so let's see, how should we do this? I'm going to reformat this just a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that and we're going to do another thing. So for the results property, so we're saying spread out everything, but we're also going, we're going to make some adjustments to results. So for the results property, um, let's first do results dot results. Okay, that should work again. Cool, perfect. Um, now I'm going to change this to res, so the um, the rest of it is not um, so confusing with the kind of the results um, plural. Okay, cool. So results works just fine. Now what we want to do here is we want to add a map onto it. Um, now map, we're going to take a Pokemon and um, return a Pokemon, uh, Pokemon with some type of transformation. Now, again, if we just take it and return it, that's fine. Everything's going to work. We, we, this is basically neutral. We've done nothing. However, um, we'd like to do something. We'd like to add an ID. So we're going to do that same thing again. We're going to uh, return a new object literal. We're going to wrap it in that extra paren um, to spread it out. OK, you see where this is going. That works again. Um, great. Um, let's open this up again. And what we want to do is we want to add our ID. Now, this is kind of looking um, similar here. So I'll just copy and paste this and put that here. I can delete it from here now. OK, so so now we're adding the ID um, when he, when we're caching this, which is great because now I can take it out of here. Um, now, just to show that the ID is what we were using to change the Pokemon. So um, I can click these and they will change. So that's great. Um, so that works that that refactor has worked. OK, um, now we were spreading out. We were creating a new object and spreading that out. So we can actually take out this and just call render item on Pokemon. Uh, that all still works. Yep. Double check. And as a last step, which is really nice, we are mapping, right? But we are taking, we're giving it a new function that takes a Pokemon um, and then returns render item of Pokemon. Now we can use what is called um, a point free syntax um, because render item, uh, let's see if I can find it. Um, Got to go back into our index. Render item looks like this. We take a Pokemon as an argument and we do a transformation to it. We return the uh, the Pokemon list item. OK, now that looks familiar, right? We take a Pokemon and call our function render. Or, sorry, uh, call our function render item, which also takes a Pokemon and then does a thing kind of seeing we're just adding inserting a function that we don't really need. So we can do um, we can use it's called point free um, function syntax, I think, or something like that. I'm um, here to basically delete that, delete that. And we know that render item already takes a Pokemon as an argument to do its work. So we can just say like, hey, I don't need to stand in the middle and take the Pokemon and then send it to the function. Um, when you call this function, um, which you will do inevitably to um, render a or on this map, um, do it with this function, which takes Pokemon, renders a list item. So or returns a list item uh, element. So um, anyway, all of this still works, as you can see. Um, so that's it. We were able to kind of remove a lot from here and also the big benefit is, is that if we were to have um, other lists or other things that mapped on Pokemon and they needed an ID, well, they'd have to redo that work of getting recreating that ID on their own. Whereas in this case, um, we are doing that work at the resource level. So now everyone who uses this collection resource is able to um, have the same data uh, and that um, consistency is super important. Um, yeah, so 
that is that's a, a, about it. Um, I don't think I would have normally showed you this in this course, but you know, for those of you who are following along via video, I hope it's helpful to you, useful to you in maybe um, working through some other code. Um, but yeah, that's all I got for you. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow with a new email.